Hey, Mel. Bri here. Gotta work from home today, because the whole family caught a nasty... Daddy! Hey, Mikey! If you're gonna puke, find the popcorn bowl! But my availability is 110%. Coincidentally, so is my fever. <laughs> Kidding. Mel, I'm so cold but hot. Uh, but I'm gonna get you that budget. Just as soon as... Right. Mikey! Popcorn bowl! Press 1 to use Instacart and get your family's sick day essentials delivered in as fast as 30 minutes. Press 2 to keep working. Do not press 2. Just use Instacart. Brian. This is GoPowerCat.com publisher Tim Fitzgerald with great news to share with our valued 24-7 sports VIP members. As a way of saying thank you, a subscription to a CBS all-access commercial-free plan is now included with your 24-7 sports VIP membership at no additional cost. Watch all of your favorite shows on demand along with exclusive access to GoPowerCat's award-winning and one-of-a-kind coverage of Kansas State sports. Stream more than 10,000 episodes all access originals and live TV, including NFL on CBS games. Enjoy the CBS all access commercial free plan, a $99 and 99 cent annual value for the lifetime of your 24 seven sports VIP membership. It's an incredible added value for our subscribers and it's time you probably take advantage of this deal and become a go power cat member. And remember to subscribe to the PowerCat Podcast at your favorite podcast provider, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Now, here is your PowerCat Podcast. The following is a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Questions Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. And it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to an edition of the PowerCat Questions podcast that could change your life. It could make you a better person. It could inspire you to greatness. Or it could be average. I don't know. It could do anything, actually, because it's the Questions Podcast. It's really not about us, Tim Fitzgerald, Riley Gates, and Zach Carlson, your trifecta of knowledgers. Is it bad that every time you say Tim Fitzgerald, Riley Gates, and Zach Carlson, my head still automatically defers to Marcus Watts at the end? Yeah, we forgot that guy. He's gone. Like, that's what I just... It still is resonating with me. Like, that's what you should be saying there. He's like your ex-girlfriend. He's still in your head, man. He he can't get enough of me. He always loves to come into the office and just kind of like ask what I'm doing. I, ask about I, me. What's doing? What's doing? We're sponsored by The Fridge. They want to know what you're doing at other liquor stores. Go to The Fridge. Quit cheating on them. They know that you know that you're at a different liquor store. The fridge, they're swell. On the corner of Claflin and Westport. Thank you. That was like the voiceover guy coming in. Zach, you just sat through that like it was church. The questions podcast, the reason it's so great is you ask the questions. We're just along for the ride. We're just putting the words to your music. Sure. Tanner's is sponsor of this segment of this podcast tanners it's in aggieville aggieville is a little piece of heaven for your liver i had some tanners on saturday how was that it was good it was it was my parents got it for me then we were a little bit later leaving the stadium than zach and i were than we had anticipated so like they put it in a box to go i mean still good you know but not as good what know, well hot. what exactly was it had uh, wings and fries oh that's always good tanner's has really good wings and they also have chicken strips they oddly call chicken lips chickens yeah. don't have lips that's the joke oh let's just get to your questions from Wabash station let's stop messing around by the way did you know k-state beat oklahoma did, what? Yeah. Okay, there was a football game last Saturday. It was in, uh, <clears throat> what's it down? Oh, Manhattan. Uh, and Kansas State played a team from Oklahoma, and uh, they prevailed. The, they prevailed? They prevailed? <laughs> That's what it sounded like you said. They prevailed. 
It's like it's like before you fail, you prefail. <laughs> <laughs> they prevailed. Yes, those young farmer kids. Huh. I wonder uh, if anybody asked us any questions about it. They might have. It was kind of a big deal. Uh, and apparently, at the end of the game, there was a call so egregious that Oklahoma is thinking about leaving the union. I think we'll get to that. I don't even think they were ever at the union. That's on campus. But, so I don't understand. Ah, they might have been there with the way they were playing at one point in the game. Oh, Yeah, they kind of checked out for a while. They might have been shopping, shopping for some books. Hey, uh, by the way, if you're listening to this podcast on Wednesday, which is the day it goes up on the site, you are listening to your final chance to get the 60% offer. It ends at midnight. I think it's midnight central, but it's a very confusing thing, these time zones. Different cities have different times. Very odd to me, but at midnight, it's over. 60% off. We've never done a deal this good. And why? Because we've never been with 24-7 when they want a game this good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It was a big win. It's a big deal. It's 60% off. A new annual subscription. I'm telling you right now. Stop what you're doing except for listening to this podcast because it's really important. And go to GoPowerCat.com and type in GoPowerCat.com. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where are you going? I kind of got lost in that. Go to GoPowerCat.com. But when you get to GoPowerCat.com, hit join, and then you'll see your deal. And if you're listening to this later, there's probably another really nice deal there. And don't get caught up in the fact that you missed out on the 60% off. And just appreciate the fact that we gave you another deal. Great introductory price at Go Paracat. There's something big coming from the network later this week. The whole damn network's throwing a party. Later, later today, I think. No, oh, I didn't even know it was later today. Oh, my goodness. Stuff's happening at 24-7. Look, 24-7 is an amazing place. It's really fun to be affiliated with them. And we're doing some really cool stuff with them. If you've never been behind the paywall, or if you have been, you don't know how we do it. It's, you know, if you've been with us before, or you've been somewhere else, what we're doing right now at 24-7 is really cool. It's different. And in fact, we've got a whole new season of the Power Chat coming up, and Zach will be dropping the entire season 1.1 for free, so you can see how cool it is. Subscribe to GoPowerCat.com. 60% off through Wednesday. Other specials will come, but this is the special. We want you to feel special by giving you a special. Isn't that special? Now, here's your questions from Wabash Station. Uh, first things first, get out, get, get out more cat. Good job, Zach. Way to transition right into that. <laughs> get out more cat. One, the score prediction thread. He was six points off the final score. You know why? Just... Because he believes in the cats. No, the dude never gets out. He just sits at home and watches football. Just a little, just just more-ish. Yeah. <laughs> kind of needs to get out more, though. Yeah. Congrats. This he is, is the second win, right? He is a two-time score prediction champion now this season. Got the Bowling Green game right as well. That's incredible. So. Show off. Don't get out more, man. Just stay at home. <laughs> stay at home and study football. Whatever you're doing you're works. It. And remember, I post the thread every week. I already posted KU's. Um, pick your score. Let's get a bunch of scores. You get a shout out on the podcast. You know, every week on the post game podcast, we have a question of the week and I just kind of pick a good question and I want someone different every week. I'm just saying the, the question of the week TCU person never responded to my, uh, direct message. So go to your, your little window there. I, I would say who it is, but honestly, as I sit here, I cannot remember, uh, and <laughs> see if there's a little green box around your wow. window. <laughs> it's been a whole week. That's fair. That's fair. I, I don't even know who I am from last week. I made no sense. Anyhow, someone's got a discount coming. Go. All right, from Autumn Cat. You guys stated multiple times that we had no chance to beat Oklahoma. Clearly, you did not know anything about football. How do you respond to this allegation? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is harsh. I would like to say that I did not say those things of my free will. Riley made me do it. It, did, it didn't make sense. If you truly, all right. If you truly believe this team could beat Oklahoma, credit to you. That's that's phenomenal that you you saved the faith in your team. But you're a moron. 
Oh, boy, he went there. <laughs> Just called all the good K-State fans, like his own father, who predicted a K-State win, a moron. My Same. dad is a moron. <laughs> Call me a moron. You are a moron. That's right. Zach picked it, too. I think I told him that when he got to the car. I was like, well, Dad got this one right. And Zach goes, me, too. And I said, you picked K-State? You can ask Chris Lilly on the field. I told him before the game, like, I just have a good feeling right now. Fritch, Fritch came into the office on Saturday morning. He said, it's going to be a good day. And I said, well, I hope they win or it's it doesn't come down to the wire and they lose depressingly. You know, my, my life right now, my current circumstances, it was great K-State won, but I was just happy I didn't pee my pants. So there's that. Look, if I didn't think they could win, I would have taken the week off from doing the five keys to victory. I did a five keys to victory. Because I saw a pathway to victory. If I didn't think it was even possible they would win, I would have said the hell with it. There's no five keys to victory this this week because they're doomed. They won. They they followed the five keys almost. Verbatim. I mean, yeah, we'll get into it, but I just I I'm still just shocked. I mean, it was an amazing win. Um, and yes, clearly we don't know anything. I get the score prediction exactly right for Mississippi State, and since then I believe I have incorrectly picked every game. Keep it up. I had them beating Oklahoma State. I had them beating Baylor. I had TCU winning. This is a no-win situation for me. I had a 32-point loss to Oklahoma. I am in the position right now that either I predict Kansas as the winner so that my jinx reverse mojos into a K-State victory, and then I hear from people saying, you pick KU, you were a Jayhawk. And or I pick K State to win, and the possibility exists that I've just jinked K State into a loss, and I hear from you pick K State to win, hey, the loss is all your fault. And same with the refs who didn't make that one call. So I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to pick K State to win. And follow me with this because my jinx applies to all schools, and I've been predicting KU losing. Although I think I predicted KU winning. In the picks. I'm not sure. This week? Yeah. Against Tech? No, you didn't. Okay, see? See? A couple people did, but I don't think you did. I don't know how that works. Anyhow, I'm, I'm going to pick K-State to win. Ruin the ending, didn't I? From Queso Cat, what is your Mount Rushmore greatest K-State upset victories? He's on a Mount Rushmore kick this week, by the way. God, so I hate Mount Rushmores. Then later, later, like this week in the overtime, he does a Mount Rushmore of cheeses, which is just like a lot of crash course collision of a lot of Queso Cat things. I love that. So Mount Rushmore K-State upset victories. Oh. I mean, this one's on there. Absolutely. And Texas in 06 is on there. Really? Absolutely. This is the number three team in the country. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Um, any major upsets in like the 90s that I'm not thinking of that you would have a better? Hold on. What, what was the exact Mount Rushmore? What? What was the exact Mount Rushmore of K-State what? Victories Vic- or upsets? Upset. upset wins. Oh, okay. I was thinking victories. Because, honestly, there haven't been – I mean, oh, oh, 03, oh, OU, I guess. Yeah. That's kind of an important one. Oh, 03, oh, OU, for sure. So, I mean, there's three. Lock. I There has to be one from the 90s that, like, sticks out. Um, But probably, probably got to go back to, like, the 50s or something. Where yeah, I don't – a game where they beat the top-ranked team and they came to town and we weren't alive. Nine, yeah. 1969, Len Dickey led K-State to a 59-21 victory over Oklahoma. How good was Oklahoma? They were really good. Okay. In fact, national TV said that has to be a typo. That has to be a mistake. I mean, I, I, I mean that fourth one, that one seems like a really good submission right there from Fitz, but I don't think, I don't think you can negotiate with me on the, on the three I just put forth. This weekend, Texas and the Big 12 Championship game. Fair. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reluctant to put the Texas game on there because I don't want someone in particular to be on my Mount Rushmore in any way. Even if he's behind the rocks waving at the top, hi, I'm Ron Prince. I don't want him up there on that Mount Rushmore. It's Snyder's players. Texas kind of. 98 shutting down Ricky Williams. Was that an upset? That was the greatest team in college football that year. No. That wasn't really an upset. Yeah. That's my submission. Yeah, you probably have to go back to the 90s 
like first time they beat Oklahoma. I'm not well versed enough in like the ninety two, ninety three teams outside of K State. It's hard to argue with those three, even though it's Ron Friends. And uh that sixty nine win was national news. There you go. I don't think you can argue those. And it made sixty nine a very nice year. From Mountain Dew Cat seventy four. How humorous is it is it how humorous is it to see some OU fans complaining about the officiating? Just and just, I mean, it I just, mean, a really bad human being would have fun with it and and tease them and make them tweet at him repeatedly. Are you done with that yet? By I the way, so good about that. I, I don't know. I think I'm done. But every time I think I'm done, I I find something else to. I feel like they're a cat and I'm the laser pointer, and I'm just having fun with them and they look silly. I feel like this is one of the instances where. And I, I, you know, I probably shouldn't cast this stone, but I feel like you could just let OU fans scream this one into the, out into the air and just see who grabs it. But nobody really gives a damn because that to complain about the officiating that game when you allowed a was it forty one to six run? Yeah, Is that what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about the officiating? If anything, the officiating. I thought the officiating was fantastic. I mean, honestly, I did not think that there were outrageous calls. I didn't think Oklahoma really got you know when, Oklahoma calls. When there's a really bad call, like Svee taking 17 steps on a layup, the national media goes, man, that was a bad call. Oklahoma, have you noticed nobody's coming to your cause? The only people supporting you are Oklahoma media members. It's it's amazing to watch them, how they t- contort what actually happened and the rules of football just to kind of fit into what they want to believe. I mean, I think That's I think clear. they're so upset about it because, let's be real, Oklahoma gets that ball. Not only do they recover it, they are inside the K-State 40 yeah. with a minute and a half to play. Even without timeouts, they probably score a touchdown. They probably go to overtime. They probably win the game. I feel comfortable saying that. Maybe. I mean... Yeah, but they act like it's a. No, I'm, I'm not trying they to. They like, act like it. Oh, we would get the ball, the game's over. That's not how it works, guys. Right. I wasn't trying to necessarily say it was justified. I'm just saying I understand where they're. I, I understand why they're so upset about. I don't understand. They literally are manufacturing truth to make themselves feel better about a loss. You lost to Kansas State. It wasn't because the refs properly made a call and. That replay worked. Oh, my God. Lincoln Riley is hosting a press conference right now at 530 on a Tuesday and is still talking about it. This is beautiful. Keep in the heads. (laughs) Anyways. They don't have a game this weekend, so this is what they got to talk about. They're complaining about the pool reporter rule, which is the same for every Big 12 team. That's just crazy. Are you sure he's not going to the Cowboys? God, that would be amazing. Oh, that would make my week. Yeah, I feel bad. Oklahoma never gets any breaks. From Wildcat Pilot 88, onside kick situation, do you think the officials get or feel pressure to rule in favor of OU to keep the conference's playoff hopes alive? Uh, if they would have... I was fearful of it. I thought it was happening. I was fearful of it that they would find a way to kind of bend the rules to fit what they needed, like making that he was blocked into it call, which they can't actually review. So, yeah, I mean, he wasn't, and he wasn't blocked into it. (laughs) This is craziness. So, no, I I was fearful, but it was clear on replay that an Oklahoma player touched the ball before it goes 10 yards. And by the way, the rules are also clear. Oklahoma players, the coverage team can't block within that 10 yards, and they were doing that. So, it was just kind of a messed up. It was an incredible kick, is the thing. It just had English on it. And the guy's not even English. It's incredible. I think I think a lot of the reason it drew up even more controversy like afterwards was because and I, and I don't have the quote in front of me. I didn't I didn't ever see it. But the pool reporter quote with Reggie Smith apparently was rather controversial. They didn't exactly address a whole lot of things and then the Big 12 comes out on Monday and they're like 
oh, well, you see, if they would have asked the question better, we could have better answered it. So, like, the Big 12 knows that they did not do a good job of answering questions after the game about it. And I think that's what continued to stir up a lot of chatter. Well, you got to ask the right questions to get the right answers. And apparently, I didn't see. The poll reported request, I'm told, was made 45 minutes after the end of the game. The officials were literally leaving the stadium when they were stopped to get the quote. So, I Honestly, the Big 12 got the call right. They did. Replay got it right. They went and reviewed it as a conference. They have explained forcible contact. There was no forced contact. You weren't. Nobody was shoved intentionally into that ball. You weren't forced in it. That's the key word. Intentionally. Yes, he was. He wasn't really he even w- blocked. He, he made. He, he initiated hit, contact. Right. He hit the ball because of the contact with the K-State player. Right. But he was not intentionally blocked into the ball. He wasn't forced into it. Someone said, well, they don't, they don't have intent in pass interference. I'm like, yeah, they do. If you get your feet tangled and both of you fall down, it's not pass interference. Right. It, look at it. Think of it this way. Not a swift moving onside kick, but a punt that is trickling down the field. And there's a receiving team player too close to the ball. You can't go up and shove him into the ball, causing a fumble. That's forcible contact. That's forced contact. You intentionally shove them into the ball to make the contact occur. Not that by happenstance, you bounce off someone and the ball hits you and you are going a different direction. But that's, that's called football. The fact they can't wrap their mind around what forced contact means, it's like they just continue to skip over that. My favorite argument was that the Oklahoma player didn't actually touch the ball. Okay, so who did? Because a K-State player clearly didn't. Like, he was nowhere even near the ball. And yet the ball the ball shot 15 yards up the it's field. Clearly touched it. And, and that's like the Seinfeld magic loogie argument. It's, it's like the JFK magic bullet theory. That's what the magic Yeah, I know. Is, yeah. I know. From Garcat12761, how do we get mauled, and that is a pun, by Baylor, and essentially whip OU physically in the trenches? Sorry. Did Baylor take us to the mall? M-A-U-L. Oh, that, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I meant take to go into the mall. I got nothing. I, I, hey, it's football. You got to go show up and play. Baylor's good, man. They play good defense. Do they have enough offense to beat OU? I would say no. But I said no with K-State, too. I think K-State put a lot of stuff on film. I think that's the real panic with OU. It wasn't because of a call. It wasn't because of the two turnovers. They got whooped. They got whooped by K-State's offense. And if K-State's offense can do that to the defense, their whole talking point that I bought into, that everything's different because of the new defensive coordinator, yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe everyone now will see how to run the ball, and Baylor's defense is good. Yeah, and I mean, it, it kind of goes back. I didn't put this question in the podcast, but somebody had asked, you know, is the offensive line going to do this again? You know, will the, I think it was exactly phrased, will the offensive line do this the rest of the season? I don't know, because there's no reason for me to think that they should have done that against Oklahoma. Well, folks, if this doesn't explain to you that every game is self-contained, yeah. you got to go play the game and see what happens. doesn't matter what you did the week before or you're going to do the week after. you got to take the game right in front of you, and that's what is great about college football. On this day, Kansas State was a better football team than Oklahoma. Would that happen again if you played 100 times? Honestly, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. You had to play the game. Kansas State played a better game and won. And next week in Lawrence, if KU plays a better game, it's going to beat Kansas State. It doesn't mean because they beat OU, they're going to win the rest of their games. It didn't mean that after beating Mississippi State. It means you beat OU. And now you get to go to the next game and see if you can beat that team, which I think they'll do. From Darren Sproul's super fan, I think it was correctly stated on the pot on the Insiders podcast that Skyler was doing too much in the losses. I think that is true. What say you? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, uh, I think Skyler was in command. He was trusting the people around him, and he had the people around him. He had Jordan Brown back. He had Malik Knowles back. He he felt like he had weapons. He now understands why King Gill's 
place in this offense, Sammy Wheeler's place in this offense. I think they're settling into who they are. The coaches understand the players, and the players understand the system. And Skyler's at the top of that. I just, he's just so, we we say this every week, and I hate continuing to pound on it, but he just he's just such a mental player that when things are going well, he he thrives and he does well. But when, you know, if if they had, if the defense had just given up easy points, honestly, the deep, <clears throat> man, what is going on right now? If the defense had not had you got, a. You got some bang caught in your throat. Oh, oh. <laughs> if the defense had not been like the trick play that they had, that bubble flea flicker, which, by the way, holy cow, that's an that's amazing awesome play. <laughs> Why did they burn that against K-State? But the defense outside of that play had been really, really good, and I'm not expecting them to beat that play. But if the defense had been kind of just abused down the field for two touchdowns right there, 14 nothing, I think maybe things are a little bit different with Skyler. You know, then he's panicking. Crap, we got to go score. We got to go score. We got to go score. He was a lot more relaxed. I think he thought they were in control of the game. And, yeah, he, he rather than try to make things happen, he just let it come to him. And it looked really, really good. From Powercat Ryan, how big was the ejection of Motley for kicking to K-State's success moving forward from that point? I think it is absolutely big. It's absolutely a factor in the game, and I think it could have changed some things, but I don't know as if that it makes an entirely different game. I'm I'm stunned it happened. First, I'm stunned that he did it. <laughs> Second, that a ref saw it. A ref was coming up right at the right moment and saw him take a kick at him and yeah, it played a role. Everything would have played a role. Liza Sullivan getting tossed would have played a big role. I kind of thought they would give him a warning. Or something like that, but no. Kicking's kind of bad. Didn't even like. I feel like a kicking rule is in there for like players down on the field and he kicks him in the head. Not like he's laying on his back and he's throwing a hissy fit, so he's kicking up at him. Like, what was he going to do? Hit him in the chest? It's kicking. You can't kick. That's not part of the game. I mean, it changed things because like that pass. I'm thinking of the one that Viking Gill had um, going towards the OU sideline, wide open. Almost like they just didn't respect him, um, and I don't. I, I think that maybe things are you know pass coverage a little bit different. I think their pass coverage is thrown off a little bit. They had at great times. players in the field that were making bad plays. They, it, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's yeah. that's such a. I don't know. I mean, he might have been gouged all day for yeah. all we know. Yeah, I mean, they had they have great players on defense that didn't play well or were were just completely. K State ran at him. They took the speed factor out of it and got past the fast guys before they knew what happened. It was a brilliant game plan. Courtney Messingham, you should get some like nice cinnamon rolls from someone for that. Some nice mustache. Uh, wax? Yeah. Is it oil? What, what do you wax. put? Okay. Wax. wax. That'd be a nice gift. You can sell your likeness, too. <laughs> from Pain Train 95 how happy do you think Kleiman is with the fact that his first choice for defensive coordinator left the team? I'm I happy. I, I, probably, yeah. I mean, we all I, said that he should hire Scotty Haleson when he hired Ted Monachino. Yeah, it was such a weird hire. It, it just it goes back to sometimes things work out the way they're supposed to work out. That said, the Chicago Bears defense is pretty damn good, and Ted Monachino is – the linebacker coach for the Bears. So, I mean, there's no reason to believe he wouldn't have been good. I just think Scotty Hazleton's a good fit. Yeah, uh, absolutely he is. Um, Plus, he's got a cool beard. And I don't have to spell Monachino over and over again. I think, yeah, yeah, that's that's a big help. Although it might be easier to transcribe him it's than better than to... Sopo. <laughs> that's true. I Again, it's it's a hypothetical question. And I don't think it's necessarily a fair question because we don't know – how good of a coach Ted Monachino would have been. I, I'm i very happy with what Scotty Hazleton's defense has done this year. I think it's taken K-State to a very high level, but who's to say that that it wouldn't have been even better w- with Monachino? So I don't know. It, I think he's happy to have Scotty as a friend and as a fit more than, than Monachino. From GCKSU Rules... Is that a new one? I think that's new. Yeah. I don't think I've said that before. He's around. He, she's around. So okay. Well, welcome if you 
if you are. Uh, how good is AJ Parker playing? It seems like Incredible. teams are not throwing his way. We asked for a dude, and he became a dude. He became a dude. He really did. I think Van Malone has done a great job at the corners. You know, because in the past, it seems like if they had two decent corners, when they went to the third guy, it'd be trouble. And now they go to the bench, and it's not trouble. Guys step on the field all the time at corner and don't make mistakes. It's been impressive. Van Malone might sneaky be the coach of the year on the staff. Yeah, that's that's not a bad that's not a bad option right there. And I want to, you know, I think at, at times. So, for instance, the interception against Oklahoma, he didn't necessarily make a play on the ball. You know, he didn't jump a route or anything like that. It bounced off their Oklahoma receiver's hands, but he was in the right spot. He knew where he needed to be to make that play, and that was the same case with his uh, the one at Mississippi State. And well, I mean, he played per- the the one against uh, Nichols was a pretty damn good interception. But and he, and he didn't fumble this. I like yeah, that part of it. Yeah. Okay. Talk this. I I don't understand. I couldn't understand on the text when we were or on the message boards about running the time off the clock on the interception. You wanted him to because he no, didn't score. I'm not. No, I'm not saying I wanted him to. You take the points, obviously. Take the points. Right. I'm saying because he didn't score, and it ate did. up clock where OU would have probably scored a touchdown. Right. I'm saying him not scoring played a significant part in the game ending the way it ended. Fair. That's what I'm saying. Definitely did help. But if anybody out there, and I'm not saying you are, if no, anybody out there is like, oh, yeah, that's what he should have done. He should have been tackled. Like, no, no, no. Nobody's okay. saying that. They're saying, I well, got confused. there was a good out of that that he didn't score. K-State ate up some more clock before it scored. And then at the end of the game, K-State, oh, you didn't have enough time to get the ball back. How much time did they actually eat off, though? Was it like yeah. 30 seconds? Yeah. A, Skyler yeah, scored on think. second down, didn't he? Or was it third down? No, oh, that was the one Gilbert scored on, wasn't it? No, Gilbert no, it was, was Skyler's fourteen-yard touchdown. touchdown run. Game. Yeah, no, it was. It, it was a. Oh, was chunk. that the Skyler draw? Yeah, it was third and fourteen. Okay, so two plays, three plays, three whatever. Plays. Yeah. So oh, probably minute plus. All right, fair enough. From Wizards six two nine four, did we make it out of the OU game with little to no injuries? As that was one of your main talking points last week. Yeah, well, other than poor Eric other Gallon, than Eric Gallon, yeah, who is not going to walk for a while. Who's who <laughs> is done with football? I mean, not just because he's a senior and he's injured, but he's done with football. This is going to be a long road back. If you haven't heard, he basically his knee was dislocated, tore every ligament. Dislocated his kneecap. His leg was his lower leg wasn't in socket. It was hideous. Everything in his knee is just done. Done. He has everything's everything has to be rebuilt. They might as well put in the artificial knee right now. That in all yeah. seriousness. Yeah. Because if I mean, I'm Eric, I'm like just do it, man. Do it uh, because that rehab is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. But I mean, uh, outside of him. You know, you just get you get you didn't have any major ones, but you have the occasional dinged up. You know, Jordan Brown obviously got a little bit roughed up there, um, but he seems fine. fine. James Gilbert just continues to take beatings. Yeah, he's just beating up. They might need to have a three running back system every single year because <laughs> you cannot have a workhorse in this offense unless he's built like Alex Barnes. Yeah, you know, I mean, just guy that can take the abuse. He'd have been pretty good. If he'd stuck around. Nobody else really coming to mind as I run through now. Now I very interesting that Durham played a little bit more than I than I thought he might in this one. You know, I wasn't shocked to see him in the TCU game, obviously, but he he was on the field a little bit more than I had anticipated. So he's wonder, having a good season. Oh yeah, no, he definitely is. I think maybe McPherson probably still battling a little bit from the TCU game, yeah, but he's still coming back. Whatever they're going into KU with right now is is your typical the injuries of the college football season through seven games. That's just kind of where you're at. Last question of the first half from I Like Pickles Cat. Do you agree or disagree? It is not fair to adjust expectations based on this win. Shout out to Pickles Cat. I ran into him on Saturday night and he bought me a drink. Wow. Yeah. It's an impermissible benefit. We have to right report on. that. I don't think so. I don't think it works that way. Mm. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> he he told it? he told me he told me to call him out when uh, when he had a question. So, uh, do you agree or disagree? 
It is not fair to adjust expectations based on this win. It is not fair. Yo, oh, yes. Okay. You should not adjust. Okay. <laughs> I got um, wording got what he's confusing. Saying. Well, yeah, you can because they have a win you didn't expect. It's fair to adjust your expectations for a win loss record. It's not fair for you to say, well, they beat Oklahoma. They should beat every team now. Right. I agree with that. Yeah. Look, they might, you know, they were looking at winning six or seven games. Now they're looking at winning seven or eight games. But, you know, if you beat Oklahoma, you can beat them all. I, it's just, yeah, they, they hang, you know, they hang 48 points. Skyler looks amazing. It, yes, you can say that you've done this before. You can have that type. Of, I'm not saying you can't expect games like that, but you can't hold them to that standard. Oh, man, well, if we have just played as good as we did against Oklahoma. Well, yeah, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, you know. That's, you've never heard that saying? No. You I mean, have You rattled it off really quickly. If ifs and, bu- if ifs and buts were candies, candy and nuts, we'd all have Merry Christmas. Oh, my God, we went there. Uh, yeah, I mean, folks, let me put it this way. You're a fan. You can adjust your expectations all you want. You can be completely irrational. You can adjust your reality. Because Oklahoma fans get to do it, so you should do. <laughs> Just, they got to play them one game at a time, Coach Fitz said. <laughs> Here's my basic feeling. Go win at Kansas. Don't lose that game. Get your sixth win. Get bowl eligible with four to play. And everything will seem good. Everything's a bonus. Getting bowl eligible in year one of a new coaching system is awesome. Adding to the win total from the previous staff is awesome. These things are hard to do. Go accomplish that against your rival and move on to the rest of the season. Then just have some fun. Enjoy this ride. Your fans, have fun. And get 60% off a GoParacat subscription right now at GoParacat.com. Special ends on Wednesday night at midnight in some time zone. Do it. Or Riley will take away candies and nuts or something. That is the end of the first half. Stay locked in. The PowerCat Podcast will be right back. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter, and suddenly you realize you're out of drinks. You start to sweat. Your friends start to turn on you. You're forced to go on a last-second drink run and end up missing the game-winning touchdown while in line. (whistles) Terrifying, isn't it? Luckily, you can avoid the drama with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, then get them delivered right to your watch party. Compare prices across multiple stores in your area, find the best deals on game day drinks, and get back to armchair quarterbacking from, you guessed it, your armchair. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Apartments.com has helped millions of renters find their perfect places. And the beauty is they're all different. None of us are the same. So why should our homes be? Someone may want hardwood floors. Someone else may say carpet all the way. Questionable call, but hey, to each their own. Some may want a doorman. Others may say, I can open the door myself. But Apartments.com has all the right tools to help you find the place that's uniquely perfect for you. Sort through and filter listings by amenities. And make sure you never miss out with their instant alert option. With more than one 1 million available units for rent, you're sure to find the place that's right for you. So whether you're looking for a place with a basement, a yard, a pool, or everything in between, Apartments.com has got you covered. Visit Apartments.com, the place to find a place. We now send it back to Fitz in the WTC gig-powered studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Questions podcast. We have some breaking news. We now go to Riley Gates at the news desk. The thing I just talked to you about? Oh, my God. We have breaking news. We now go to Riley Gates at the news desk. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't know what this is. K-State student tickets have dropped below 7,000 seats purchased this year. 
and that is in violation of the contract with SGA and K-State Athletics to sit on the 50. That guarantees them their 50-yard line seats. Very interesting development. And let me just say, that's an indication of what I've been talking about, how I swear to God, this generation of students doesn't do as much stuff, whether it's go to Aggieville, go to games. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying maybe that's right. Maybe they're focused on academics. Or maybe they're playing Call of Duty and doing social media. I don't know. I am not in favor of moving the students off the 50-yard line in any way. It's not like there's a bunch of fans lined up to buy those tickets. It is one of the great advantages of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And the Oklahoma game kind of proves my point. When you're there, when you're involved and engaged, it's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And it frustrates me when any fans get up and leave at halftime. I'm Gene Taylor, I'm ready for no reentry. You have one ticket, you come in the door one time, and that's, you know, maybe there's some exceptions for emergencies. But these people that go out to their car to drink, and come back in. Let's get the booze going in the stadium and say no more pass outs. If you're going to pass out, you're going to do it in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tagline, actually. That that can be your campaign. There you go. But no, I students, come on, man. Let's get going here. Buy those tickets. It's such a great price, too. It's just a different generation. You know, you kind of go through these ebbs and flows of what's important to people and I don't know. That's it. I wouldn't have guessed they had fallen below that threshold, though. It seems to me when they're there, it's the same number of fans there always has been. I mean, I know a lot of students that just they don't buy them because they a they enjoy going to tailgate and they're like, if I want to go to the game, I know somebody's going to sell theirs. Hmm. Okay. I think they should just take the model. If you have a student ID. Congrats, you have a ticket to the game. It's not enough money to be made on that. Then take the money that they sell the tickets for, make that a student fee, divide it out. You don't lose any money. I don't know. All right. And you get cheaper tickets. You just have to wait in the line maybe I don't once, believe a, once in, a year. I don't believe in a tax that makes people not interested in the item. Yeah. I don't know. Come on, students. Interesting open to the second half there. Horrible breaking news update. I kind of thought you were trying to say, like, I was something funny, and I thought, like, the breaking news was, like, I used the bathroom in between segments. That did apparently go very well. All right. Hold on. Uh, there is breaking news. It's gotten hot, and I'm having one of my things. So, excuse me for the beep. There we go. <laughs> you know, if you wouldn't <laughs> talk, or if you would not stop talking when you turn it on, nobody would probably hear that beep. <laughs> you know? I also think if we covered up the temperature reading with tape, you wouldn't notice it. <laughs> I don't believe that it's 84 degrees. It's not here. 84 degrees in here. That thing does not gauge temperature right, but I'm having one of my hot flashes. My part yeah, of my, I, I did get a little bit warm. Part honest. of my treatments. Let's do it. Questions from Wild Bass Station were sponsored by The Fridge. <sighs> what, what do I want to say about The Fridge? That they're great. I feel like we should have a testimonial. I was just wandering around the town buying my alcohol from whatever liquor store said hi to me. And then I found the fridge. <laughs> Kevin and everyone at the fridge were so kind to me and sold me alcohol. I love the fridge. The fridge at the corner of this and that and the town in which we live. <sighs> sure. And we're sponsored by the Hilo. Drop in, say Hilo. Hello. Hilo. Have pizza. Have burgers. Have drinks. Play Milwaukee Roulette, which doesn't involve a gun. The Hilo is a safe place to, to party. <laughs> Here's your questions from Wild Bass Station, which are sponsored by Zach Carlson. From Mountain Joe, what do you expect the crowd to look like in Lawrence now that KU beat an inept Texas Tech team? It'll be it's mostly be human beings. <laughs> I I don't think they'll look any different than any other collection of human beings. 
Except there will be some strange birds on the sidelines. Dude, this place is going to be packed. It's going to be packed. It's going to be fun. Uh, they're still t- I mean, let's be honest. Packed means k State is going to show up. I I don't know, man. There's tickets. There's tickets. I think a lot of KU fans are buying tickets right now. Well, that's fine. They should. I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they're happy that they won a football game. And there are tickets available. You can go to Lawrence and root on your Wildcats. It's not going to be the sea of purple that it's been in the past. But it'll be a fun environment. It should be a good environment. It. This, I like that this game means something for both programs, which means that if K-State wins, it hurts even more for KU. It's bad for K-State to lose. I mean, someone said, you know, they're doing that. They're doing like a special right now. If you <laughs> sounds bad, if you go to KU Sports and buy a ticket and use the promo code Beat Kansas State. <laughs> You get like thirty percent off or something like that. Thirty dollars off. Thirty dollars off. But that still makes it fifty bucks a ticket. Um, roughly yeah. is what someone said. I mean, I legitimately think this is gonna be the the most packed that stadium has been for any game in probably three years, four years. Probably. I mean it's they they just won. Even if they had lost last weekend, they're an improved team and this is gonna be the biggest sunflower showdown in over ten years. It's just where you're at. I don't know how many K-State fans are going to show up. Not because... More than six. No, that's true. I see him right. Not because K-State fans don't care, but because I think KU fans are going to buy up a lot of tickets. And not sell them to K-State fans. Yeah, there's tickets out there. I'm sure. Plenty of tickets on the stuff and stuff. I'm just saying, like, if a ticket started to verge on $100, I'm not going to Lawrence. The Seat Geek was over 100 bucks. Get in. If you really want to go to the game, but you don't want to spend that much, I would honestly just get to Lawrence and scalp one. There's no way they're going to be. No way there's going to be a hundred dollars. Also for Mountain Joe, K State always gets up for KU. But how does KU winning this week help or hurt them going into this game? Uh, Mountain Joe, K State or KU? You're asking me to get into the psyche of a Jayhawk. You're asking me to understand how they think and live and breathe. And even though I have some of these Jayhawks in my family, dirty secret, I don't understand them. I don't understand them at all when it comes to football. I don't understand them in one bit. I don't know how this affects them. It gives them hope in a hopeless situation. That's my assessment. They will believe they are the Notre Dame of the Plains because they won a football game. I don't think it changes either team's mindset what they did last week, honestly. This is like one of the... Exactly. I truly believe that this game was going to be this exciting and this built up, even if K-State had gotten boat raced by Oklahoma and Texas Tech had not lateraled the ball. There's no boats in football. (laughs) First you think kicking someone in the head's okay, and now you're putting boats in the game. I think you're putting words in my mouth. Well, based on the prison question and last week's <laughs> overtime podcast, never mind. Let's go ahead. No, that, it, it's going to be an exciting game, and I, I think that the mental focus is there for both teams regardless of their past results. From Ema Wildcat 82, now that we have taken the wheels off of the covered wagon, what defensive measures must we employ to defuse KU's newly discovered RPO offense? It's... <sighs> It's one of those things where you can't get beat looking. Yeah. You, know, you, you can't you, buy in. you got to have your eyes in the right place. I mean, RPOs simply are meant to confuse you and get people open. Don't be confused. It's not, it's not anything revolutionary that Brent Dearman's doing. It's Coach Snyder was doing a lot of RPOs. Run pass options. I can either hand it off or I can keep the ball. I can run or I can throw the ball. You got the RPO. Just do your job, and there's nothing to happen there. The The problem with KS, KU is they have really good players on offense. Their skill players are good, and Carter Stanley's finally playing within his skill set. Not, not to feel bad for a KU guy, but I, I feel bad for Carter Stanley that it's taken him until now to finally get in a system where he can thrive, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, that you just hate that for any kid. Like, man, he clearly has some talent, 
And for however long, he hasn't been able to, to really showcase it. Now he's in a system where he's comfortable. But, I mean, the, the key is going to be – I mean, I think one of the most underrated keys right now is, is kind of keeping Puka Williams contained. You keep him in the 100 to 120-yard range, maybe one score – or less than that, I guess. You know, if you want to keep them under 100, that'd be even better. But it kills the RP because if you're if you're shut down the run and Puka is the only guy that's running the ball, Velton Gardner hashtag old friend alert <laughs> is their only is their second leading rusher right now, and he averages 17 yards on the game uh, uh, per game on the ground. So if you can contain that running game, the RPO is not going to be as effective because. You're not concerned about the run because they're probably not running the ball off the Wasn't RPO. Isn't Felton waiting on a Texas Tech offer? Uh, he committed to Texas Tech. Oh, that's right. Then he decommitted. He decommitted from K-State, committed to Texas Tech, decommitted from Texas Tech, and then signed with KU. That seems like a good career move. Uh, look, just be good on defense. K-State's been good on defense. KU will score. I think there will be points put in the, up in this game. But here's the thing. What we've seen KU do the last two weeks is get into shootouts. And that's where they get really comfortable. You score, they score. You score, they score. Certainly happened at Texas. That was incredible. (laughs) The fourth quarter was amazing if you're into offensive football. K-State doesn't get into shootouts. Even though Saturday's game is 48-41, they... Didn't didn't feel like a shootout. (laughs) It wasn't really a shootout. K-State just methodically scored points. Ate up the clock, ran the ball. And if they do that to KU, I don't think that RPO offense is going to settle in. And I hate to tell KU, tell KU fans this. There's a, probably a pretty good chance, you know, you're worried about losing Brent Deerman to another program. I think he's probably going to be like at Colorado State as a head coach next year. If you're an AD at a Mountain West program, why not? Somebody has to take a chance on him. He's had a head coaching experience. He was successful, albeit at the Division Two, three, and I don't even know what it was. But it's he obviously can call plays. The f- players love him. His his energy on the sideline is awesome. You literally cannot ignore what he's done. I mean, he he is a very good coach, and I hope he gets the hell out of Lawrence soon. Yeah. What I mean, they have they scored twenty four points or less in every single game this year except for Texas, Texas Tech. So the two games he was the offensive coordinator for, and Boston College, where he called plays, rumoredly was calling the plays. And obviously, he was he was running? The, yeah, it was the same offense we're seeing now. So, sorry, did you notice my question to Chris Kleiman? I guess I picked. Do you uh, do you throw out the other games and only pay attention to the two or three games that bring <laughs> calling plays? I did miss that. Yeah. <laughs> From. Purple powerhouse. We showed more against OU offensively. Is that a concern heading into the KU game that they've got more of our stuff on tape? Nah. I don't think they showed that much more. No, they did. They showed I mean, the, I they think they showed, showed some more. They they didn't show anything you wouldn't get if you'd scouted North Dakota State yeah. film. I mean that the upside down wishbone, inverted wishbone, whatever it is, the three running back set is a staple of what they did in Fargo. It's a very I'm I'm surprised we didn't see it earlier. I don't know if it was like we're going to pull it out against OU or just seemed like the right time to do it. Yeah. You'll see that a lot going forward. And maybe they wanted to bring it out earlier, but then Jordan Brown got hurt. And you really need three backs back there to, to do it. And they had been running it in practice with with Brown, Gilbert, and Trotter. And man, it's pretty to that watch. That's beautiful. That cut blocking. Oh, oh, it's great. I just, I think, I mean, honestly, look, KU gives up over 200 yards per game on the ground. They give up over 200 yards per game in the air. This should be a pretty simple game plan. You are a team that wants to run the ball. This is a team that can't stop you from running the ball. Run the ball and then let Skyler hit his open receivers. You don't have to lean on Skyler. I've come to the conclusion Skyler Thompson is just never going to be a quarterback that throws for 250, 280, three touchdowns. That's just not what he's going to be. That's not what he's asked to be. So pound the ground and get him to 180. 210. Yeah. Or a million. Wow, that'd be cool, too. No, it would not be cool. I don't want to be in Lawrence all night. From Wizards6294, what does Kansas State need to do in Lawrence this weekend to beat the Jayhawks? I just answered the question. That was a good job. <laughs> yeah, you, you just, if you play the way you're capable of playing, you know, you don't turn the ball over, you don't get penalized. It's 
it's no different than any other successful program. K-State doesn't have the guns to be an OU. You get whooped in other areas of of the game. Oh, but you're good enough to score 18 points all of a sudden and you're back in the game. Just got to go do your thing, man. Don't get in a shootout, but score. I'll throw something. Wear them out. Throw something else in there, and I'm totally just kind of speculating based on the the few games I've gotten to see KU play. Don't let – look, KU's got nothing to lose in this one. Yes, they've got three wins. Yes, bowl eligibility is still attainable for them. But I think even in the back of their minds, they know we're probably not going to win three more games. I think they could try to piss you off a little bit. I think they could try to rally up, take you out of your game. You know, they'll, they'll play a little bit dirty, I think. I think they'll try to get under your skin. Their coach stole that Dr. Pepper trophy. Did you see that? It's on film, man. They're Hon- dirty. Honestly, pretty remarkable that he recovered from that lightning shock. Well, we can see some problems here. <laughs> from Ag Countant, Messingham seems to be mixing in the QB run game more and more. Is this part of what he wants to do normally, or is it him adapting to what it takes to be successful with the players on the roster? They ran the ball with their quarterback at North Dakota State. They ran the ball at North Dakota State with the quarterback. I think they got caught up too much in let's not get Skyler injured and re- finally realized we have to run the ball with the quarterback to have this offense function. I knew it was obviously had gone up. I had not looked at the numbers in front of me. <laughs> you want to hear his rushing attempts from the start to now? Three, three, four, seven. 11, 10, 13. <laughs> it's been there the whole year. And I think they got so wrapped up in – because if they if Skyler gets hurt on a run here, they're screwed. They're in trouble. All respect to Nick Ost and Jaron Lewis, they are screwed if Skyler goes down. So I get it. I respect that they wanted to keep their quarterback healthy, but 13 rushes in a game is totally fine, especially when four of them are touchdowns. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and then you get, I don't know how many sacks he had, but those are rushes and yeah. other flushes are rushes. But, yeah, you got to run him on design plays five to eight times a game. And the way they used him in scoring situations was brilliant. Some of it was Skyler. But that option play, where did that come from? Oh I didn't, God. They didn't run the option in North Dakota State. I'm telling you, Bill Snyder called that drive. Ten plays, 83 yards, scored on an option. It was beautiful. From Cats 1996, I think this is a new one too? Uh, it's new to the podcast, okay. not new to the site. New to the podcast, welcome. Is the plan to redshirt Zintner? He's, he has clearly been our best option at kickoff this year. If I remember correctly, he has used his four games. I was. I meant to have that pulled up on the four games thing and then i forgot so Golly, give me like riley god we don't ask much of you but i just ask you to do all the work that's not much well i was assembling all the questions <laughs> and then i was watching netflix <laughs> no I, I i just was assembling the questions i got to the overtime and then i forgot ty zentner has played in three games according to the kansas state participation really including chart. this one the oklahoma game I don't, did he? he didn't play in the game. Oh, that's game. yeah. I'm sorry. They were wedge kicking them, or you know, they weren't deep kicking, which kind of caught me off guard. They weren't going to kick it to Ceedee Lamb. Kick it out of the end zone. That's what you told me last week. Well, he's was, the only one to do it, so they would have had to use him to do that. I think they're still borderline on it. I don't think they know what they want yet. Well, they're being inconsistent with it, which is actually kind of good. I find it odd that they haven't really used Blake that much this year. Because, you know, it's, yeah, you can preserve his leg for, for big field goals, but he didn't struggle with field goals last year. He got tweaked, didn't he, at one point? He was I, out for a couple weeks. Yeah. I don't think that was because of, I mean, was it a wear and tear or did he get I hit? It was, I think it was hip. Yeah, I think it. Okay, maybe I was wrong then, but I apologize. If that's I don't the think case. they'll use him in this game. They'll probably use him at Texas. They'll, yeah, they'll probably use him one more time. I, I think they'll probably. Right. If they haven't played him over four yet at this point, I have to believe they're going to redshirt him. And if I had read this question before the press conference, I would have asked today. You know, if they use him in Lawrence, it tells you how important Chris Kleiman thinks this game is. Can't let him make a big play on kickoff return, which they're capable of. They've got some athletes. Yeah. From Salt Hawk Cat, how big was this win for the fans? I haven't seen the bill that electric since the disappointing Auburn loss in 2014. 
This win seemed like it was the spark the fans needed to truly get excited about attending games again. I think, yeah, I think it was a spark the fan base really needed. I mean, the fire's been gone, man. I had someone point out that, I think it was Fritch, that said, you know, it's ironic because really when they lost to North Dakota State, what was that, 13? 13. That's when they came off the championship, oh, they lost. And for me, it was the end was really the Vanderbilt loss. That's when the pastor was like, okay, I'll go through the motions, but I'm going to go to the parking lot at halftime and start drinking. That's when everything kind of changed. K-State used to have fans that would, you know, for the most part, stick through the team, stick with the team too thick and thin. And now it's kind of like, well, I'll go, but I really you know, I don't want to see the game. Man, it, I hope so. I hope it brings back some of the that incredible passion the fan base had. We'll see. We'll see. It, I mean, get to Lawrence. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that's, I think you're going to have to – you have to continue to string together wins, obviously. You're going to have to probably, I mean, if you want to really excite people about what's happening moving forward, you probably got to end this year at 8-4, and 7-5, yeah. something if like you, that. If you get eight wins in the first year of your new coach after replacing a legend, fans are bought in. Yeah. Because that's a better record than Bill Snyder had been putting up. So fans are bought in. 6-6. Six and six. It's fine. People would understand, but it's not going to say, oh, let's go buy our tickets now. Right. You're right. I mean, there's a certain feeling of K-Staters being numb to success. Like, being 6-6 six and six is good. 7-5 and five is good. But they had so many years where they won 10-11, which I still think people don't appreciate how rare and incredible that was that Bill Snyder did that. Not many programs do that. So the Alamo Bowl season against UCLA will go down as the most like one of the most underappreciated nine and three seasons of all time. Yeah. <laughs> like that team won nine games. That's crazy. Yep. Well, we'll see how the season plays out. But a win Saturday really kind of puts everything into a different league. They have an opportunity to do something really cool. From KSU number one, is there a window, in your opinion, where this team can run the table, especially given Texas and Iowa State's recent struggles? Look, Texas has struggled, but they're also dinged up, and we don't know what they're going to be next week. Right. And it's Texas. I could see K-State going down there and winning that game, and I could see K-State getting blown out in that game. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable sitting here going... Oh, I do think K-State could run the table because it just it seems very far out there. And it's tough to win football games, man. There's five games left. Is K-State capable of winning each one of those games? Yes. But the magnitude of that adding up, it's like beating odds, you know, all along the way would be incredible. Yeah, it can happen. There is a way to do it. The way you do it is you don't lose. <laughs> you score more points than the other team. You go to Lawrence and you win. You go to Austin and you you play better than the Cows, and then you just keep going. I mean, and these are good teams. KU's better. Texas has talent. I mean, come on. I would say at the end of the year, West Virginia, well, yeah, West the, Virginia. The problem with asking K-State to run the table is K-State might be a little bit better than Texas Tech. They might be a little bit better than West Virginia. They might be better than KU. But they're not miles ahead of these teams like they are when you can look at them and say, yeah, we'll go 5-0 and in the year. I mean, like like 2012, for example, you knew or you expected that team to run the table. You didn't look at Baylor as an iffy game. You were like, exactly. we're going to beat Baylor. Yeah, I mean, if everything was guaranteed, then Oklahoma would have beaten Kansas State. Bingo. And the thing is, is is we've seen what happens when K-State has an injury or two or three. Everything changes. They just don't have enough depth. Stay healthy, and things get very interesting. Have some more injuries, and then go back to being not the threat that they were against Baylor and Oklahoma State. From B.A. Wildcat, who does the staff think we will beat in the Big 12 championship? Or does the staff not have enough confidence in the Cats to, to, to think about the championship? Well, Baylor's in a pretty good position right now. I got news for you. Whatever the line is on OU Baylor, I think it's next week, OU Baylor, take Oklahoma plus whatever points they give you. It's two weeks. Uh, because I know this because— Isn't that OU's first game back? No, it, it's not because the game that 
the either or game with when K State's at Texas is Baylor TCU. Ah, oh, you're right. They play Iowa State. Yeah. Okay. Well, then it's not as funny. OU's going to destroy Iowa State. <laughs> They're absolutely going to blow them out of the water. But I thought it was Baylor, so never mind. Yeah. I mean, uh, my thing is, is let's say, let's just say for argument's sake, Baylor beats TCU and Oklahoma be- loses to Iowa State. Now Oklahoma's got two losses. Do we get to tweet at OU if they beat Baylor that they ruin the Big 12 chances to get a team in the playoff? <laughs> Is that how it works? You're supposed to lay down for the leader of the conference, or are you just supposed to lay down for Oklahoma? I'm not. I'm not sure how that works. Riley, really. nobody gave me the instructions here. Call me after the Texas game, and then we'll start talking about the Big Twelve Championship if it's still in play. It's interesting. k has got two losses. You're in tough. You're in. You're in a tough spot. If you want to lose again, you're going to need a lot of help. But it's kind of weird that it's still in play. But you got a tiebreaker over Oklahoma. If they went out, if they went out and so you got to be a Baylor fan. Yeah. Eesh. Sorry. Yeah, you really do. If K State wins out and Baylor wins out, K State Baylor. Hmm. There you go. Wow. Boy, those TV ratings will be high. 11 a.m. Saturday morning, Kansas State versus Baylor for the Big 12 championship. And the college football world goes what? And Baylor's probably playing for a trip to the college football playoff. Man. But, yeah, there you go. All right, so you need to cheer on Kansas State. You need to cheer on Baylor. And then you're there. You know, you support the Cats, and then other than that, set aside your morals. That is the end of the podcast. (laughs) Thank you, Reggie. You've been listening to the Power Cat Questions podcast presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.